Hi, Eddie Marcus here. You know, this month, October 2024, I've heard people talk about this is going to be a, an amazing month. They've even, even set aside the 8th and the 9th. Now, what the significance of those days, I have no idea. I'm just remembering that they were mentioned. What I'm thinking, ladies and gentlemen, is what I observe that's unique in a sense. And that's how this system is operating. And in its operation, it reveals and exposes the other systems of the world because regardless of what names they might fall under or what path they may stride, they end up at the same place, existing on lies, cheats and cons, hatred and racism and bigotry. They end up with some have and some don't. They end up terrorizing and bombing and killing old folks, babies. Doesn't make any difference. They all end up right there. Now, many of you young people, regardless of your ethnicity or your shade, you can get a sense of how your people responded in the past based upon what they are doing today. Some of them are championing all of the ugliness that you and I were taught was something that we never wanted to be indulged in. And yet, this is an expression as if they know nothing else. And their children, you, probably, many of you, have been taught the same things that they are doing and you agree with it, but you're not really sold yet. There are others who haven't been that steep in it, but it doesn't matter, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody plays a role in it. Everybody is playing a role in it. This hell that exists today exists because we approve it. We allow it to exist. Now, many of us try to find some excuse and say we can't do any more. You are alive. What do you mean you can't do any more? The only time you can't do any more is when you are dead. And it is better to be dead in the ground than walking around dead. What am I saying today? I'm saying... As spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people, for all people, for every person on earth, I want you to know that the message that I bring is that every last one of you are special. Every last one of you <clears throat> are on this earth to do something special. The earth requires it of you, the human race, requires it of you. You are here to do that. And in doing that, you will find your greatest joy. Everything that you could imagine, your happiness, your freedom, opportunity to live your dreams. Doing it. And what are you doing? You're doing everything. Some, but not limited to these, are those things that are essential for your maintenance and survival. And, you know, like food and clothing, shelter, education, stuff like that. You know, stuff that everybody kind of need, want. And based upon what you and your role that you play, somewhere in all of it, you rest. Your joy is right there. You choose it. You find it. You reap the benefits. And the benefits are that all of the things that are made by the hands of man 
belongs to all of you. In other words, you are partners in everything that exists. You own, through partnership, all that exists, all that exists. And what you own, you don't have to buy, you don't borrow, you don't, you don't go into debt. You, <laughs> my friends, I want you to know that all of that is yours. But you cannot follow Donald Trump. You cannot follow Ms. Harris. Now, what do I mean when I say that? You must follow what is right. You must follow what is right. If Ms. Harris is right, then you follow right. You're going right along with Ms. Harris, she's going right along with you. If someone is doing something that's wrong and you know that's wrong, you're not going along with it. It's not going anywhere because it can't go without you. And to know the truth, I mean, here's a little secret. I don't know if you can get it, but I'm going to tell you this anyway. If you really love, I mean, really, really love, <laughs> it is a joy to give your life as an expression of that love. I'm telling you. You don't run from death. I mean, you not run into it, but if it's in the path, that one cannot be manipulated. That one follows that which is real. And he's not talking about what's real to you or what's real to you or what's real to you, or what's real to you. He's talking about what's real to that one. And the thing that makes it so legitimate is that in doing and causing that to be real. It does not cause any pain. It does not cause any suffering to anyone. That's how you separate it from the other that does. So I'm just saying, ladies and gentlemen, it's time, I think, for us to grow up. We're at a time right now where you can see in America and in, in the wars, the people out there killing folks, they're dropping bombs on people. That's stupid. That is absolute. I mean, though, that's barbaric. That's that's barbaric. You got a bomb, and you're dropping it over on kids, babies, old folks, building, just demolishing it because you can. But if they could shoot back, you wouldn't. If they could shoot back, you wouldn't. If they could stand up to you, you wouldn't. But because you can, see that's the kind of stuff we live in. It's time for that to end. This is time for the flowers to really bloom, the grass to, ooh, I mean, you know what, I'm thinking about springtime already. We can end the stuff. We can keep it going, just like it has been kept going, but we can end it. History can say there came a time, 2024, 2025, when the American people rose to the occasion to say no more, no more pain will be followed using my name. No more suffering will be felt using my name because my brother I see me, and my brother is me. And I'm not going to hurt me. I'm looking after me. Man. Well, I'm going to pause it now. Well, I think I really should close here, but I just had this thought, and I want to share it with you. You remember the, the Christian story about Jesus Christ on the cross? You know, the movies say that he had this thorns around his head. They pierced him in the side. 
already nailed. And when we hear that message over the pulpit, or just, I guess we've heard it so much, seen it so much dramatized, till when we ever come across that message, that story, we always kind of feel kind of melancholy-like. <clears throat> And I look at us, and this is how we actually feel, to be on a cross, to have all that stuff happen to us. We know how that would make us feel. We know how, to, we know the pain. We know, even though we've never been there, but we know. And so we say, when Jesus on the cross, that's what Jesus is going through. That's the kind of pain and suffering that Jesus is going through, proving his love for me and you. Now, I say <laughs> that's laughable because God is not like we are. I mean, restricted like we are. For me, I'm convinced beyond a shadow of doubt that when Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego was going through that, getting ready to deal with that fire furnace, I'm convinced that they were so high on life and truth and love and dedication and commitment that they probably couldn't wait to get in that thing. Daniel in the lion's den. You know, we always want to ascribe to this the, the way we would feel. We scared. And we won't look at it when it got to go through. Nah. Look, yeah, watch this. Expressing the joy of what you hear you this this expression this love I have this joy I have the world couldn't the world didn't give it to me no nah, no nah. and the world can't take it away see this is another side of stuff that people who really don't know don't know for Jesus to be on that cross the God of love, the God of everything, it has magnified that man, anybody that's in that position to the degree <laughs> that it is like bursting like the sun with joy, with joy. Oh, everybody else sees it the way they see it because they're limited. But not, this, this is divine activity taking place. So Jesus wasn't hurting. Jesus wasn't crying. He, the only sad thing he felt was that for we, the people, who were still down here lost in all this darkness, and he's standing up on the darn cross feeling like on top of the world. <laughs> because he's free. Knows the truth. That doesn't mean anything what they're trying to do. To, to, to God, are you crazy? This is our own limited men mentality. So I just thought, thought I'd share that with you. We've been a slave too long, all of us. Goodbye.